Michel Paver is one of the greatest storytellers, one of the greatest writers working in this country today. If you have not read yet the Wolf Brothers series, Dark Matter, Author Nair, take it from me that this is an omission in your life which you need to sort starting from today. It is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a privilege to introduce you to the stage today, Michel Paver. the nicest introduction I think I've ever had uh, and I have to say this is the most splendid location in which I've ever given a talk. Thank you for that welcome. What shall I write next? And I found an old story I tried to write about a boy and a wolf, which I really liked the idea of. When could I set it? Well, suddenly I remembered how I'd felt with that bear. And that's when all my love of the Stone Age came back that I'd felt as a child and I thought, yes, this is what I'm going to write about. This picture was taken of me when I actually, the first day I met the wolf. Um, so that's why I got a big grin on my face. But I actually didn't know that, that she's a lovely wolf, she was, she's dead now, but she, I didn't know her, her mouth was open <laughs> until after I saw the picture. Um, but you can probably see she's not snarling, she's yawning. And actually, when a wolf yawns and they're right next to you, that can mean one of two things. That can either mean that they're very relaxed, or it can mean that they're embarrassed. Oh. <laughs> and since I had, just before that picture was taken, I had just stuck my nose in the scruff of her neck to find out what a, a wolf smells like. And they smell wonderful. Not like a dog, they smell like the sort of sweet grass. And she was probably thinking, what on earth is this wolf <laughs> doing? But that was a wonderful experience. Um, so, since we're talking about wolves, I think I'll read you a little bit, if I, can, if I haven't lost a bit, from when Torak, and this is just before questions, so start thinking about questions and things. Um, I'll read you a little bit from the beginning of Wolf Brother when Torak is just about to meet Wolf for the first time. And then we'll come to questions. Torak looked down into a narrow gully through which ran a small, swift river. He recognized it, the fast water. Further west, he and his father often camped in summer to gather lime bark for rope making. But this part looked unfamiliar. Then he realized why. Some time before, a flash flood had come roaring down from the mountains. The waters had since subsided, leaving a mess of wet undergrowth and grass-strewn saplings. They'd also destroyed a wolf den on the other side of the gully. There, below a big red boulder shaped like a sleeping auroch, that's like a big Stone Age ox, lay two drowned wolves, like sodden fur cloaks. Three dead wolf cubs floated in a puddle. The fourth sat beside them, shivering. The wolf cub looked about three moons old. It was thin and wet, and was complaining softly to itself in a low, continuous whimper. Torak flinched. Without warning, the sound brought a startling vision to his mind. Black fur, warm darkness, rich, fatty milk. The mother licking him clean. The scratch of tiny claws and nudge of small cold noses. Fluffy cubs clambering over him. The newest cub in the litter. The vision was as vivid as a lightning flash. But what did it mean? His hand tightened on his father's knife. It doesn't matter what it means, he told himself. Visions won't keep you alive. If you don't eat that cub, you'll be too weak to hunt. The cub raised its head and gave a bewildered yowl. Torak listened to it and understood. In some strange way that he couldn't begin to fathom, he recognized the high, wavering sounds. His mind knew their shapes. He remembered them. This isn't possible, he thought. He listened to the cubs' yowls. He felt them drop into his mind. Why won't you play with me? The cub was asking its dead pack. What have I done now? On and on it went. As Torek listened, something awakened in him. His neck muscles tensed. Deep in his throat, he felt a response beginning. He fought the urge to put back his head and howl. What was happening? He didn't feel like Torek anymore. Not boy, not son, not member of the wolf clan. Well, not only those things. 
some part of him was wolf. A breeze sprang up, chilling his skin. At the same moment, the wolf cub stopped yowling and jerked round to face him. Its eyes were unfocused, but its large ears were pricked, and it was snuffing the air. It had smelt him. Torak looked down at the small, anxious cub and hardened his heart. He drew the knife from his belt and started down the slope. Oh, no. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.